Hey guys, I wanted to make a short introduction video on using uh, Robot C for the very first time. Um, if you have not yet uploaded, or rather, opened up the program, um, it's this icon. So it's Robot C for Vex uh, Robotics 4.0. When you load it up, you're going to get, uh, let's see here, you're going to get a screen um, similar to this one. If it looks a little bit different, you might just happen to, uh, need to open a new file. When you open up that new file, um, it's going to look something like this. Um, so you have your task main, um, and then you have your brackets where you're actually going to be typing in your code. Do me a favor, at the very, very top of your screen, uh, do an asterisk and a, nope, do a forward slash and then an asterisk. Uh, that's going to turn green. Go ahead and call this um, introduction to robot C. Coding practice. Come on. There we go. Okay. So you have your forward slash and your asterisk. You have introduction to robot C coding practice. You get another asterisk and another forward slash. Um, all that means when your code is turning green um, is that your computer is entirely ignoring this. Um, this is when we talk about pseudocode uh, a little bit. We have touched on this in class. Um, so whenever you type a forward slash and then an asterisk, you can put your code and then uh, do the opposite to close it. Or you can do two forward slashes and then say, you know, this is me turning, turning my motors on or what have you. Okay. So next thing we want to do, you're going to notice all these different tabs that are up here. Um, before you are able to put any code in, um, we've already completed our builds. So your robot needs to be coded to where your mechanical engineer has actually put all the wires, actually put um, all the different um, analog and digital sensors that are actually attached to your robot. So you're going to go into motor and sensor setup. Under motors, uh, we are not using a joystick. We only download our code. Uh, our robot moves automatically without us... Uh, being involved beyond touching a switch or simply turning it on. So we can only put our motors in ports 2 through 9. Alright, so this one is going to be um, my right motor, port 3. I'm going to choose my left motor. Again, it really doesn't matter which ports you choose as long as it's 2 through 9. I could have put left motor in port 8. I'm just choosing um, 2 and 3. And then make sure we have these set for 393 high-speed motors. Um, we have 269 and 393. Um, 393 are a little more popular. We have a whole lot of them, um, and that's what I would recommend to use, especially for our uh, drag racers. Um, next, under your um, digital ports, again, we do have analog and digital. Our analog ports um, are anything that is a spectrum, so it's giving you um, a variety of digits. Our digital sensors are anything that is simply turned on or turned off. All right, this is my difference between an analog clock and then a digital clock that we talked about in class. Um, my digital sensors um, is something like a bump switch. So my bump switch is, are we turned on or not turned on? My bump switch is, of course, a touch sensor because you have to physically um, press it uh, to actually make something happen. So I'm going to apply this. I press OK. Um, my Pragma configurations immediately show up after I've applied that and saved it. If for some reason you're trying to code something, let's say oh, I want to turn on, you know, a motor that's been placed into port 6. Port 6 is not listed up here, okay? Anything you are coding needs to be within your Pragma or else it's not going to be recognized. Your code is not going to work, all right? So when I am trying to get um, my robot to do anything, let's say we simply want to move forward in a straight line, uh, very similar to what we're going to be doing in drag racing, I'm going to start my motor. I need my port 2, or just my right side. Oops, my port 2. We're going to put this at a power level of full speed, which is 127. I then want to start the motor of my left side. So port three, 
power level 127 and then put a semicolon. I'll also do the, so this is starting my right motor, two forward slashes, starting my left motor, and you can see up here, so port two, so port two is my right motor, port three I said is my left motor, so these have both been turned on. Now I need a wait time. My wait time is the amount of seconds I want my motors to be running. Hypothetically, um, if you were drag racing, this would be a lot of trial and error, depending on how far um, our, uh, I guess, finish line is from where you begin. So if, if we're drag racing for 20 feet, if we're drag racing for 30 feet, um, this is also impacted by your battery level. So if you have been practicing a whole lot throughout the day, um, you've done, you know, seven trial runs and you're really depleting your battery, your wait, your wait time may be impacted. Okay. So keep that in mind. I'm going to pick an arbitrary number. I'm going to say, all right, I think that I, oops, I'm going to drag race for 10 seconds. Love it. So, um, motors are on. I guess the motors are on or vehicle is running for 10 seconds. And then I'm gonna go ahead and quickly turn my motors off. So after, so stop motor, I'm gonna say port two. This does not require a speed. If I'm stopping my motors, they're just, they're just ending. Um, a lot of times I'll have students that, um, actually I'll do an example. So they do start motor, uh, 127 and they do stop motor port 3 127 so this is stop my right motor stop my left motor and they're like perfect well done okay so when I go to compile this I'll actually have to save it first so I will go into eighth grade coding practice, um, intro to robot C, and I'll click save. You're gonna notice, so code generation not performed, there are errors during this complication. I'll say, I'll have students that are like, I don't know what's wrong with my code, everything looks okay. If you're stopping your motors completely, you do not need a speed. There is no speed. If you are at a complete stop, you're not going anywhere. Okay, go ahead and compile that the red X's go away. Those red X's that just came up, so I actually have them saved, I believe, yeah. So I go to compile that, a different page, okay? There are errors, all right? Those red X's mean your robot has no idea what's going on. If they were yellow, ooh, they can kind of figure it out. Your code may or may not work. You want no X's, you want nothing. All right, so both of my motors have turned on. They're at my highest possible power level. I know I have 393 motors. My drag racer is gonna go for 10 seconds and then we're gonna come to a stop, okay? Hey, Ms. Vogel, how would I hypothetically um, get my vehicle to, be, to have their wheels turning in the same direction, okay? So there are two ways to get this done. Um, I did this in class. I gave the example of if you are facing a car, your motors are actually turned in opposite directions, okay? Think about the way your axle is put into those motors. Technically speaking, one of these motors needs to be negative, okay? So take a look at your hands. Just look down at your hands, all right? So if both of your thumbs are facing inward, all right, flip one hand over, okay? That's when your motors are heading in the same direction. They're not heading in the same direction. If, flip it back, your thumbs, your motors are both facing inward, they're not rotating the same way, okay? Which means you're gonna have to guess and check which motor has to go the opposite way. This is gonna make a whole lot more sense when we actually download the code um, and uh, see how you've built it. Uh, but there's two ways to get one of your motors to go in reverse. You can either make it a negative power level or when you go into 
motor and sensor setup actually in your motors, you can choose which one becomes reversed. Um, so that makes more sense when we actually uh, practice our build. But this is just um, the beginning intro steps. Uh, I've got my motors set up. I have some type of a switch. Uh, we've learned how to turn our car on. We've learned how to turn it off. And then uh, beyond this lesson, we'll start to understand, you know, uh, which motor has to be negative, how we start to incorporate lights. Um, potentially, if I have too much power, depending on the gear ratio you use, you might actually have to uh, reverse your car um, for a couple seconds if you're going far, far beyond the finish line. Um, but that is all things that we'll be chatty chatting about um, further on in the next couple weeks. Uh, and that is all I got for you today in learning how to program our, uh, our robot C for the first time.